bang. Well, the first video's up. Give you timeline on that. It's Saturday at 8:30. But uh, okay. Um, we are going to finish the color on this. I actually think the face is pretty well, um, pretty well off. We're just, we're just gonna quickly just put highlights on this side to just get that a little more up. And I think I'd say the face is done. So now, um, like I consider that the hardest part probably of the of the artwork is getting the face done. Um, next up, next the next hardest part is getting getting everything else done. <laughs> um, so I I did fail on the two hour two hour time limit I set myself at. I mean it's not like I really set myself at a two hour time limit. I mean, because I, I didn't say it off the bat that it's going to do it as a two-hour drawing. I just said it was a two-hour drawing way after the fact. So that's my excuse, and I'm sticking to it. But, um, yeah, we're going we're gonna to follow our same rules for the face that we did for our hands here. Um, we're mostly going to put a lot of red in them to make them much much more blood filled I mean cuz let's face it that's basically what skin is it's holding your it's holding you in it's it's a just a big bucket or big uh, a big packet humans are basically big packets of blood blood and viscera just in a package so that's how I'm gonna treat it here now this shoulder back here we are gonna put a little light on it but um, I mostly want it kept in the back, so the highlights, the 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 lights on the fingers are going to be much much higher than the lights on the back. But also, um, fingernails technically should be the highest highlight on a on a character's hand. But um, I'm not too too concerned with that, in all honesty. I'm, I say that a lot. I just realized I'm very unconcerned about my own artwork. Maybe I've hit a point of zen where it's like, yeah, this this is all it's going to be. Just this, but getting better over time. So I hit that point of zen where I'm like, you know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to hassle. I'm not going to, I'm not going to make it a hassle having to deal with, um, deal with a lot of technical aspects of making artwork. I'm just gonna sit back and enjoy it and do it my own way. Cause really that's that's what that's what art's all about, just doing it your own way. It'd break out in the song right now, but the song that has that lyric is probably heavily copywritten. <laughs> Monstrously copywritten. Um So yeah, with the way her hand is like this, most of what is in shadow is actually caused less by the shape of the less by the shape of the hand and more by um, more by her fingers blocking the light. It's actually kind of a difficult pose to work with, difficult hand pose to work with. And her pinky is technically coming at the camera. That's what that's supposed to be. So it's it's again just a very difficult hand pose to work with. I mean this hand pose is pretty hard to work with too, but this one has her fingers over her hand and they're not in a fist. And I actually, because it's her left hand, I can't actually pose my own hand kind of like that to look at it that much because, um, and I mean, it's like, 
It's like I can't really do that that well because I'm left-handed. Uh, I am going to note one thing. Um, you may look at her face and think her proportions are really weird. She has a very, very tiny nose, a kind of pointed chin, and her lips are a little smoochy. I mean, she is making a face, but... <clears throat> and her eyes seem, like, kind of more animated than normal. What what I... What I did when I, I came up with the actual, like, drawing of her is I actually wanted it to be a little reminiscent of the shapes you'd get out of her her official artwork. So I did actually want... I did actually want her to kind of have the, um... A little bit of her look from her official artwork. So yeah, that it's it's very much taking the anime aspects of it and, and just going with it. Well, basically drawing it in my own style still. It's a weird amalgamation -y thing going on. So, shoulder. Grab the red again. Just put just put some red in her shoulder. Live it up that skin. I'm gonna grab her highlight, highlight color, because her shoulder is basically just a big, solid piece of muscle. We can do this real quick. <laughs> sort of the advantage when you move on from the face is, um, you basically start to get get into the the muscle groups that are actual muscle groups, so you can actually do bigger, longer strokes on them because they're just. They're just that much larger pieces of muscle. We're gonna grab that. That the once over. Okay, I think that's all of the skin tone on that part except for this hand. This hand, standard rules apply again. We take a red. No, uh, maybe not that red. I'm actually going to grab um, this and go back over it like that. Because, like, right now, the thing I don't like about this hand is her knuckles are kind of lost in, like, highlight. So I kind of want to go in and maybe grab our dark immediately and just start putting in a bit more knuckleage. <laughs> it's a technical term. Leave me alone. Um, a bit more, like... Yeah, I'm, I'm like looking at my own knuckle, um, my own my own right hand. Just put in a bit more shape to the, uh, the knuckles here. I mean, she doesn't need she doesn't need like giant knobbly because like it's it's fantasy, so it's like she doesn't need giant actual fighter hands. Now we're gonna grab our red. And the big parts with with red on the knuckles are on, or I should say, the big parts on hands that get very red, like even looking at my own hands, it's like the knuckles have very, are very, very prominent amounts of red in them. I mean, if I really, really, really got detailed with a character, um, I would absolutely start doing like the veins on the back of her hand that she had she would obviously have and just go in with like a, a purple it's like a bright purple and be like and and start drawing veins in i think i think i've established i've established at this point i'm not who i'm not super hyper realistic and i almost said hooper realistic <laughs> Which would be a combination of hyper and super. Though that should really be a word now. Now that I've said it like that, it should really be a word. So I'm not hooper realistic um, in what I do artistically. But also, like I mentioned before, this is like bottom. We're at the bottom of the character now. And it's like. 
I'm probably not going to put too much detail into these into these hands. They look a little they look a little clawy as well, which is unfortunate. I think that's just the nature of um nature of the beast in this case. Okie dokie, that's that. Now her hair is gonna be, the one thing on her head that is not gonna be this is right here. It's gonna be, that's gonna be red. And we're actually gonna select a pink because the barrette, barrette? No, that's not a barrette. Is that a barrette? Whatever. Um, it's actually very pink in the drawing. And it's actually got a very high shine to it. Oh, the can, I didn't overlay her Coke can. I had to do the basic color of her Coke can. Shame on me. Okay, that's done. Now the Coke can we're actually gonna we're actually gonna go over first. Cause is that blue? Oh no, it's black. It's black and it's got a Chinese um it's got it's got some Chinese characters on it. Or yeah, I think it's Chinese. They're very blurry. <laughs> or they're or they're they're Japanese. And it's wrong. <laughs> I I did re I just did realize um we lost a bit of her hair down here. She's actually got a new hairstyle as well. It looks like because before she just had spiky bangs, and now she's actually got some very specific layering to her hair and hair like everything else we've done so far um, is going to inherit the same rules we do our we do our light color for the lights and highlights and then we're going to do the purple for our shadows and then we can go back with the actual hair color to make sure it stays the hair color And this, incidentally, is also where we're going to get a lot of the the strokes in that make it look very hair-like. On top of everything else. I mean, on top of everything else isn't all of the layers we've done with the hair already. This is where we're going to get some of our... Our, our more highlighty look to it. And or our more... Um, my mind wandered there. More of our... Like, it looks like hair look. And technically... The reflected light on the bottom of the can should be brown. No, I'm actually thinking about it. Even though it has a black label. Um, and, like, we should maybe take this and actually put it in like that. Just make that a little bit of the reflection of her hairpiece in her, her Coke can. Her pop can. I, I honestly don't know what it is on her head. I think it might just be a uh, a bangle of some kind to hold her hair together, but it really does look like a can of pop. Like no joke, it looks like a can of pop. It's absolutely pop-like. So we are going to take a bit of pink of her, whoops, pink of her skin and pop it in here. That's her ear back there, but I don't, I don't really think I need to go into coloring that ear as much. If 
For edges and lines, I'm not really trying to get rid of lines in my drawings. I do I do leave lines in in some places, like around her eyes, and I'm going to leave a lot of lines on her hair. But uh, a little bit, like I'm trying to get away from relying on line work for, for my drawings, for my artwork in general. Um, not because I don't like line work, but Photoshop, like it, it lends itself a little better to doing doing painted stuff than than line work and I would I would absolutely consider um, using painter or a among I think it's is it manga studio the manga one I don't know exactly uh, for drawing but I'm sort of set in my my like almost <laughs> um, how could I put this um, I'm not it's like I'm set in my ways of using sort of a difficult tool to do artwork in Photoshop. It's almost it's almost penitent. Penitent that I'm using this like a difficult brush with a difficult tool for doing my digital artwork. But it's just what I'm, I'm sort of used to and sort of, well, I want to get used to more, I should say. We're going to flip so this follows my hand, the arc of my hand a little easier. I mean, I just, after just saying I'm going to be penitent, like I'm using a penitent tool. It's like, oh yeah, I should probably flip to do this a little quicker and easier. Um, yeah, I, I may play around with different, different, um, different digital art programs as I go forward. Now we do have some red we got to put into her hair because there's the red around it. Maybe a little too much, but that's fine. I take I take almost a Bob Rossian um, view to doing artwork sometimes where I'm like, oh, I made a mistake, but that's fine. Mistakes happen. They're just happy little accidents. Happy little mistakes. Like most children. He would never actually say something like that. I don't even think he'd make that type of joke. Well, maybe he would, but... Um, yeah, and then we'll grab our, our green we were using for reflected light. We'll put a, put a mess of it down here. A little bit of it right there. And um, maybe a little on this side. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely of the mindset of, if I make a mistake, it's okay. Because it's better to have made the mistake and... Okay, I want to put a little... There's like a red stripe on her skirt down here. And we're going to grab that. I'm definitely of, of the mindset that um, it's okay to make mistakes as you go through... Just bit, just about anything. It's it's impossible, it's impossible to be perfect, all the time at everything. So it's okay to make mistakes at things and move on. That's also why I'm very like, like I don't I don't mind my own roughness around the edges and I don't mind doing. Like just getting a thing done to get it done and then moving on because I know I know they're gonna they're gonna be mistakes all over the place. I know I'm gonna have to go in and and if I were to sit there and just fix every single little mistake, every single misplaced brush stroke, it's like it, I'd be here, I'd be here doing this for way way more than the than the two hour like two and a half hours I've been doing it so far. And it's kind of like, oh, I just want to finish and move on and do something else. But it's also like, well, I should really just try to get things done. I know I've said that a couple times, but I'm actually running out of things to say right now because I think I've pretty much covered everything about doing this, doing this piece. Except the background. Except the background, and there's going to be one last... There's going to be one last thing I do with it, and that is I'm going to hit it with some... Um, some, uh... What do you call it? Curves and levels.
You know what? I'm I'm gonna do one thing. I am gonna make sure that this sort of we're putting in the shadow for her. Hopefully, this will read as the shadow for her hand and hand and arm and sleeve a bit. Does it? Um, yeah, a little. It's it's a little it's a little rough because she has the hair back here, but um, yeah, that kind of reads as the shadow for that. Just because I want um, I just want to pop that up just a little bit more. Uh. Okay, so what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna do some pen tooling. Uh, well, do I need to? Let's do this. I don't know if it's a good idea to do this, but we can try. Um, that could be the start to a. That could be the start to a mask. So, um, how do I want to do this? Um, I could just do a quick mask, just to make sure it's all in here. So, I, I do rarely do quick masks, um... Because the background on this is going to mostly be, you know, anonymous shapes, um, I think it's going to be okay to get away with doing a quick mask for it. If I were doing like a real background, I would absolutely not be doing this. I would sit there and I'd pen tool the entire drawing out. Um, so a quick mask is basically you're taking you're taking your brush tool and um, well this isn't a true quick mask this is me just painting in the layer mask but it counts for a quick mask as well in that you're you're taking and you're sort of just brush stroking out where you want things shown or hidden the white the white will make it shown black makes it hidden. Masking is one of the most important tools to use when using Photoshop, and it is actually one of the main reasons that I would not consider switching tools, switching digital art programs. Both for sort of like pseudo quick masking like this, but also um, but also the masking that comes with using like say the lasso tool to lasso out shapes, and even like what I just did, where I broke a I broke a major rule of Photoshop and used the use the magic wand tool to get my base the base shape I wanted here so it is a little hairy on these edges and I probably should have just did, did the damn selection I but and like I mentioned I, I rarely if ever oh well, I shouldn't say rarely if ever because I'm doing it right now I rarely do do this I, I generally sit there and pen tool things. I mean, I could pen tool right now. It's just my mouse is in a weird position. So pen tooling, um, what you have to make sure is you, I make sure auto add delete is unchecked and we're on 
the uh, the paths paths portion. So what we're going to be doing here is we're just going to go through. Like I said, my mouse is in a weird position, so I'm probably going to miss a lot of my uh, anchor points here. And we go through with the pen tool. And this is one of those things that gets very, very zen if you do it enough times. And we are, we're just going to go through and select out all of our shapes. And like I think I mentioned in my previous art video that uh, I did a lot of pen tooling. Um, part of the previous, previous art related job I did. Um, but actually, I think every single... Every single person I've ever done artwork for at some point asks either as part of the actual job or just as another side project if I could do some sort of photo manipulation, photo editing. And it's always it's always it almost always comes down to me doing this as part of it. So when we got our pen tool, we can come to the, the paths palette and we control click it. And then now we can do our, um, our fill of that. So I'm going to point out one thing. When I went into this mode, um, the way you do this is when you have the mask, the layer mask selected, you hit the, um, the backslash or that like straight up and down symbol on your keyboard and that turns this on and off so now that we have this we can make a mask and now um, let's see how well I did or let's grab it let's grab black um, not too sh that doesn't actually look that shabby for being predominantly something I did with uh, the tool you're never supposed to use Um, so we are going to pick this gray now because I mostly use we're gonna do something like this The background I actually want to make it cooler compared to her warm colors But we are gonna start with our our light and then our Our light and then our shadow and we're gonna go back and forth on this because I actually want the background a little lighter than the standard gray or no you know what I think I'm gonna make it close to that as close to that gray as I can get <clears throat> I'll grab her green pop the green in the bottom here so I want it cool so we're gonna grab a blue Now, really, the the art the art student in my head is thinking, well, or just like even art teaching in my head, I'm thinking a couple of things here. One is I could keep the background red. If I keep the background red, um, it will actually match her colors a bit more. But if I keep it red, it means it's gonna it's gonna clash with what her colors are. The alternative to that is actually to make it very green to make her pop out a bit more. But I want to avoid the Christmas color look. I mean, the green is actually doing okay. Um, so we're gonna have a ton of colors in this background. But for the most part, I do want it, I do want it to follow the, the lights we've established. Um,
And actually, we are going to grab, we're going to grab one of these tools we're never supposed to use. Just make sure sample all layers is turned off. We're going to smooth this out quite a bit. Actually, I'm, I'm. Whoops. <laughs> I'm actually gonna. Uh, oh, I don't want this. I thought I grabbed the brush tool again. Um, we're gonna actually get a blurry. <laughs> again, tools are not supposed to use. We're actually gonna do a blurry brush on the background now because it's a little easier in that smoothing. Now we're gonna go back to the hard brush pop up new layer and this is going to be just a lot of back and forth just a lot a lot of back and forth to get this get this to a place I'll, I'll like it Okay, so I think um, we've got a slight tone in the background. I didn't want to do like a crazy detailed background on this piece. Um, so the final thing we're going to do is we're going to we're just going to punch up the, the, the lights and darks a bit, give it a little intensity. We're going to go and I want just a slight bit more saturation on this nothing crazy just a tiny bit more and then we're gonna do a gradient map over this this is another one of those things where it's like oh, come on thank you I don't know why that double click wasn't working we're gonna grab our, our light and our dark so what we're gonna do with this we're gonna set it to overlay and we're going to drop its opacity down a bit. Now what all this do what all that did was it in it upped the sort of it up it just upped the uh the intensity level of what we've got here just to give it a little more punch cuz we take all this out it actually sort of drabs down a little bit and then we put it all back in and it gets, you know, it gets a a more colorful look to it because I do like having color in in my drawings let's get my mouse off the screen get off close enough to getting that off the screen so that was jam kura 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 doberry kura dura I can't say her last name it's kura doberry let me say that in the most in the most American way possibly is Kira Doberry. Um, so I hope everyone enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching, guys. Um, if you liked it, please, I rarely say this, leave a like or comment or subscribe. And if anyone can guess the pose still, if it hasn't been guessed already, you get to pick the next thing I draw. Um, so thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time for whatever it is. I have no idea.